Hi, and thanks for joining us back on the floor at Condo Conference 2025. I'm your buddy Mike, representing the folks at Condo Business uh, and uh, Media Edge, the Remy Network. And I will uh, tell you, if you come by the show, you can grab the latest copy. And uh, it is all the buzz here at the conference. Many of the experts within the uh, magazine itself as speakers and uh, featured here on the floor. So we're delighted to be here. By the way, subscribe, tell a friend, share it with somebody in the industry. We would really appreciate that. Uh, now, we've had the opportunity on the floor to meet a number of great experts uh, from different areas in a wide array of topics. Today, this is a fascinating one. Uh, TAF, the Atmospheric Fund, is something that you need to know about if you're starting to evaluate what to do with your building overall. And joining me to talk about that today, Rob Bond. Thanks so much, Rob. Hey, thank you for having me. I nice appreciate to have it. you. Rob, first of all, yeah. what is the Atmospheric Fund? So uh, the Atmospheric Fund is a regional climate agency that aims to support emissions, pro emissions reducing projects across the GTA and Hamilton. Uh, we used to be called the quote unquote Toronto Atmospheric Fund, but since then our funding has evolved from just city funding to from provincial and federal sources of, of government. And what's the main mission of the fund? So our main mission is to support emissions reducing projects across the GTA and Hamilton. So that can range from electric vehicle infrastructure, clean energy. I work for a team called the Retrofits Accelerator and that focuses on buildings. Okay, so now buildings have these reserve funds. The reserve funds go towards major projects within the building. Yeah. That means that now you have to think through an engineering study probably and you have to start to budget out what you're gonna do and how you're gonna execute that. Enter the atmospheric fund at that moment and say, okay, go to one of our approved engineering firms and extend your study to include an, uh, a carbon reduced or net zero approach. Yeah. And we'll cover that consulting. Yeah, so we're providing funding for what we're calling quote unquote enhanced reserve fund studies. These are studies that are intended to be completed, like you said, with the overall reserve fund study process and starting to layer in some of those energy and carbon reduction opportunities to help us get to those net zero targets that the city is planning for. We're providing 70%, up to 70% of funding for those costs of that additional level of service. Um, and that's really to help empower boards understand the retrofit options that are available to them. So r roughly for another 30% on top of your retrofit uh, assessment, you can do this with an atmospheric a conscious effort in place. Yeah, so the, the goal is this, for the standard price of your reserve fund study, you can also get the additional insights of the enhanced portion uh, on top of that so that you can kind of build a, a decarbonization roadmap for your facility. Okay, so everybody is doing this then, right? Um, it's been slow uptick. We started this program. Why? <laughs> well, why? It just seems like it makes sense. It doesn't cost you more to do. Well, we're trying to get more eyeballs on it, I think. You know, we've been coming to the condo conference, we've been publishing in different um, uh, organizations, but we understand that there's a lot of competing interests that boards have to manage. And our messaging is focused around, you know, improving the overall living experience and potentially improving utility bills as well as your building through this approach. It's all planning. We're not asking you to, to retrofit your building tomorrow. It's really just trying to give you the baseline information you need to make informed decisions about projects that you're building. If you're going to do something with the chiller and there's a net zero option that doesn't cost more, you, you'd probably prefer to know about it. If there was something that uh, could happen with the retrofit of your uh, garage that is better for the environment, you're now aware of it and it's not going to cost you more or might even be a savings, you would like to know about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go as far as to say that they're equal cost. I think in a lot of the projects we're supporting, the, there is an incremental cost that we have to be aware of, um, but it's, it's mitigated by the fact that we already have money set aside in our reserve fund to pay for these projects. So right. really, this part, of it, part of this assessment is trying to identify that difference in cost and how that might impact your level of funding going forward as well. I understand. Okay, so now uh, a board uh, is in a position to have an assessment done and they need to take a look at the reserve fund and what yeah. to do with it. What would be the next steps that they would take in doing this? Yeah, so normally we would sit down in front of the board to discuss what the program is, what we're offering. 
and we'd come to an agreement with the board. That's outlining our responsibilities as well as what our funding commitment can be to help facilitate the project. Okay. Uh, we have a list of qualified vendors to actually complete with the work, so we would work with the board to the select some of those vendors to ensure you're getting the best possible product out of this reserve fund, enhanced reserve fund study program. And, and that those study uh, vendors are engineering firms, architects. Yeah. So so many of the many of those um, companies have background in working in condo capital planning. Right. We're working with uh, engineers, architects that are familiar with the nuances uh, around condominium capital planning. Right. right. Um, and they're and they're layering in, and they have some of that mechanical background as well to assess the the energy implications of some of the projects we're, we're recommending. Is there a time limit around this? So our funding uh, runs out in March 2027. So we are looking to try to get more people on board in, right. in the year of 2026. Our hope is that our funding can be extended beyond that. But that uh, loosely is our is our deadline for for getting some of these projects completed. Okay. I will. I'll encourage these boards out there that are in this scenario to take this route uh, and and just find out what could you do that can be improved without causing further damage to the atmosphere that might improve our chances with climate change and might even be more efficient in the long run. Uh, Rob, where can people find out more? So you can find out more at uh, TAF's website, so TAF, T -A -F .ca, and there you'll have some information about who we are and some of the services we're providing to condominiums. I appreciate you taking the time to give me the 30,000 foot look at this. Yeah. I'm amazed if, you, if anybody's not participating in this, that's in this position, I will urge them to reach out and find out more. Yeah, and thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Okay, Rob, you have a good show, and uh, no matter where you are, you have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and tell a friend about the Remy Network and, uh, of course, Condo Business Magazine. <laughs> <laughs>